Welcome back to Fox and Friends. This is like a David and Goliath story. A Philadelphia man flips the tables on his bank and forecloses on them. You heard that right. So how did he succeed in all this? Patrick Rogers is here to explain this weird, twisted tale. Patrick joins us this morning from Philadelphia. Hey, Patrick. Hey, how are you? I'm doing well. So explain this for us. You actually had a home that Wells Fargo came to you and said, look, you need to take out a homeowner's insurance policy that you don't think it's worth the value of your home. What did you do to Wells Fargo in response? Uh, I told them I wasn't going to uh, renew that policy that they were having me renew. I had an insurance policy on my house, which I had bought for $180,000. And uh, Wells went to the insurance company and said that they wanted me to insure it for a million dollars. Uh, and as you can imagine, the premium on a policy like that is through the roof. So uh, I said, no, I'm not going to do it. And they said, well, we're going to do it for you. And they force placed an insurance policy for me that doesn't cover me. It only covers them. And uh, that was the genesis of a dispute with them that's been running for nearly two years now. Well, we did reach out to Wells Fargo, got no response from them. It sounds just like your experience with them, no response at all. Are you Welcome surprised by that? Welcome to the world of dealing with Wells Fargo. No, I'm not surprised at all. You also then found an interesting loophole, or not a loophole, but you found an interesting law dating back to the 1970s, which enabled you to, to, to work, work this angle, which is they needed to respond to you within 20 days. They needed to res uh, respond to you with written responses to your inquiries. They didn't do so, and therefore, you were able to place a levy on their office and foreclose on them? Uh, that's true. There's a law called RESPA and there's a 20-day uh, window that they have to acknowledge receipt of your request and then they have 60 days to actually respond to that request and if they don't, you, it's possible for you to collect damages and even additional fines on top of the damages. So I took them to court here in Philadelphia through the municipal court system. I won a judgment. They ignored the judgment. The court uh, advised them they had to pay. They ignored that court's advice. And so uh, I got a sheriff's levy. And when they ignored that, I ordered a sheriff's sale on their branch in downtown Philadelphia. And uh, they still weren't going to pay. But let me tell you, when the media coverage started and it was on the front page of the business section that their office furniture was going to be sold off to pay a judgment, <laughs> I had a check in my hands the next day. Brilliant. And I can imagine a lot of viewers this morning waking up wondering if they're in a similar position. Do you think that your story opens the floodgates for other people watching this morning? I think it does. I mean, uh, uh, people ask me what I hope to get out of this. And uh, one thing is if I wind up being the Johnny Appleseed of RESPA letters, I would absolutely love uh, for that to be my epitaph. Uh, these, uh, these RESPA letters are not difficult to write. There are numerous consumer resources sites on the Internet. There's government sites on the Internet that will help you with that process. Uh, and these RESPA letters, the banks are legally required to respond to them. So I would say to consumers, these are a very important tool if you're having a yeah. problem communicating with your mortgage lender. Patrick Rogers from my home city of Philadelphia, good luck to you and thanks for coming in and telling your story this morning. Thanks for having me on. Thanks, Patrick.